Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Fire and Frost Jumping Attack build by Rage Gaming. Now, as you might have guessed, and as you probably know, Fire and Frost do not work well together because Frost is being reset by Fire, which just makes it a worse bleed. Of our two scavengers curved swords, which are obviously really important, and then we have one in fire and one in cold for their specific affinities. Go figure, it's the fire one that's using the flaming strike ash of war, and the cold one that's using chilling mist. Interestingly, this does give it B in scaling, but weirdly, they both scale better with strength overall. So that's actually the stat we're going to talk about leveling the highest with this build, which is a surprise. So, as you can see, letter scaling isn't an accurate representation of how well something actually scales. You can see fire has a C scaling, cold also has a C scaling, both in strength, but then cold has a C scaling and dexterity, and that C scaling and dexterity is higher than the C scaling in strength for the cold infusion. The cold also has a B in intelligence, and as you can see here, that B in intelligence actually makes it worth investing into intelligence. The optimal stats for a cold scavenger's curse sword is going to be 18 strength. 42 dexterity and 50 intelligence there's almost no benefit to investing in strength despite it having a quote-unquote c scaling now on the other hand fire also has a ski scaling but as you can see it is worth investing your entirety of your points into fire a weightless seal for our just self buffs so we've gone with the dragon community seal there is bleed in this build because we do have bleed even if it's a small amount on the weapons so when bleed occurs we get more ar from our white mask our headpiece and since we are relying on jump attacks ideally in pve we want to strengthen those using the raptor's black feathers chest piece the other two are purely based on maximum poise for the weight so i've gone for the tree sentinel and lionel's gauntlets for the talismans we have lord of blood's exaltation again with a bleed going on then we have Rotten Wings, Sword Insignia, and Millicent's Prosthesis to give us successive attack power as we land more hits and the benefits of the decks of this talisman. Lastly, to further boost our jump damage, we have the Claw Talisman. In the Wondrous Physic, when we are using that, we want to buff up our fire damage and we're going to get our successive attack power as high as possible, so we're using those tiers for their benefits. Then we have the stats, so we have 60 Vigor, 16 Mind to get to nice 100 FP, 17 Endurance is just what I could push us to, we are going to need that for our poison. Then, as I said, we leveled strength as much as we could. It happened to land at 77, but I wouldn't go higher than 80. We've got 20 decks, although it's more like 15, because we are getting that boost from the talisman. 25 faith for our two self buffers and 10 arcane, just so we can use the seal. Of course, those two incantations, as you might expect, a flame grant me strength to further boost our fire damage and physical, and golden vow for some defense, and again, more AR. So for my improved build, we're going to have 60 vigor, as that's the vigor soft cap. We're going to have base mind. 22 endurance as that's the most endurance we need to not fat roll we're gonna have 23 strength we're gonna have 53 dexterity and that is pushing towards the 60 dexterity soft cap however due to optimal scaling we are not pushing it closer then we're gonna have 50 intelligence that is at the intelligence soft cap and that is just for optimal ar and damage for the weapons, we're going to be using Dual Bandit's Curse Sword with Cold, and we're going to be using Chilling Mist as the Ash of War. As you can see, I also have a Volcano Pot. If you did want to keep the reset with Fire, that would be my choice, as it has an AoE lingering effect. For Armor, we have the Crucible Axe Helm, Raptor's Black Feathers, Tree Sentinel's Gauntlets, and Tree Sentinel's Greaves. That's going to give us 76 poise as displayed in game. For the talisman, we're going to have Bullgoat's talisman. That's going to reduce our poise damage taken. We have the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and Milson's Prosthesis. That's going to give us continuous attack buffs. Then we have the Claw Talisman. The Claw Talisman and Raptor's Black Feathers are going to give us jumping attack damage boosts. However, they are nerfed in PvP. For the Great Rune, we have Radon's Great Rune, that's a solid PvE option, it's going to give you more health, FP, and stamina. For the Crystal Tier, we have Applying Hard Tier and Thorny Crack Tier, 